Thank you. And thanks everyone for attending. So as Daddy mentioned, we will be going through um, the SAP Ariba extensibility options, as well as the community page that we've created uh, for SAP Ariba extensibility. So you can see a little bit of our agenda today. First thing we'll cover is what is extensibility. So within SAP Ariba, that is comprised of a number of things, but today we'll mainly focus on APIs, custom forms, as well as RPA or robotic process automation and bots. Next, we'll go through a quick tour of the SAP community page, which we've created. Uh, some of the things you'll see within this tour include the resources that are available, uh, a podcast series that our platform team has created. Uh, we'll show you the blog and Q&A section. And then we'll talk a little bit about the collaboration space. So really this SAP community that we've created is intended to be a place where our partners, customers, and suppliers can all collaborate ideate and discuss the use cases that they've come up with and been able to solve using these extensibility tools that we offer today. So let's get started with the components of extensibility. So today we have around 200 APIs that are available. Some of these APIs are RESTful APIs, others are SOAP or web service APIs. At the moment, we have about 425 customers using these APIs, and we're seeing about 40 million API calls per month. Uh, there are a number of APIs within our systems, and customers are using these in a lot of unique ways, which we'll get to in, in uh, just a little bit here. The next option for extensibility includes custom forms, which is a simple drag and drop interface, which allows you to choose your approval flow engines. We have options such as classic or custom approval flows. And those, you can configure approval rules similar to how you would in the buying and invoicing environment today. These are also reportable via APIs. So if you need to report on the data within these custom forms, we have APIs available for that. One of the more interesting things though, is these forms have the ability to call external APIs. So customers can go into their developer portal under the My API section within the Manage tab. You can actually create an API that connects to these forms. These APIs allow you to automate, enrich, and validate the data that's in this form. And we've seen customers use these in very interesting ways to automate processes. Um, and really, it, it's driven a lot of value for some of our customers that are using them the most. And lastly, we have RPA and bots. So uh, recently, within Q3, we came out with a feature that allows customers to register their bots on the SAP Ariba developer portal. Um, previously, customers were not allowed contractually to use uh, RPA or robotic process automation bots within our system. Uh, we did create this registration in order for customers to be able to be compliant. We do applaud your journey toward extensibility. We want you to be able to really use any tools that you need in order to extend your systems, drive values to your end user, and really just create that value um, where it may not exist today in SAP Ariba, where there may not be a specific tool to accomplish what you're looking for. So a little bit more on bots. Uh, we do want, again, to allow you to start your journey using bots. And we want you to orchestrate business processes using the user interface. But the key here is we want you to do this where APIs do not exist. And there's a reason for that. So within the user interface, a lot of these bots that you'll see will be screen reader bots. And that's essentially going into the user interface and they're reading kind of some of the uh, ID fields behind the, um, behind the scenes that we don't necessarily see as an end user. And these fields have those unique identifiers and they change when we deliver hot fixes and monthly service packs and everything else. The problem with bots is these are simple to build. Uh, however, they'll, they'll be a bit costly to maintain. When we do those changes to the user interface, whether it's a hot fix, a service pack, or even your quarterly releases, there may be fields that get added or changed to the user interface. And when that happens, these bots fail or break and they need to be fixed. That can be a lot of turnaround time for your IT department to see what broke, get it back in test, make the fixes, get it tested by your users, and by the time you may be deploying back to production, we may have another hot fix service pack 
or release that could potentially break that. So that's why we encourage you to really look at what APIs are available because these are resilient and they're actually supported by SAP Ariba. So there may be a little bit more effort up front, but in the long term, they are more resilient and there's a lower cost to maintain these. As you can see a bit below, we have a deprecation policy surrounding our APIs. So if you start using an API, there is a policy where we have to have supported that API for at least 24 months. And once it goes into a deprecated state, uh, you will have at least 12 months to move over to the new version of that API. Uh, and once that new version is out, uh, we can move the API into a deprecated state after that year period so that customers have ample time to test it in their QA systems, get it up and running, and transfer it over to production before deprecation and decommissioning. We're also going to announce the deprecation of these APIs. You've probably seen this happen today. If you're a frequent user of our APIs, we have a few out there that are in a deprecated state, uh, and some will be moving to a decommissioned state uh, within the next few months. So what's out there today for you to learn more about our extensibility options? So we just wanted to mention at the start of the slide here a little bit about the trainings that we have available. And you can see we have trainings for APIs listed there first in the Learning Hub as AR850E. And we have a custom forms training as well as AR851E. Uh, our SAP community page, which I'll go to in a second, some of the highlights for that are anyone can register. So today, a lot of our customers end up going to SAP Ariba Connect or Ariba Connect, um, and this is a limited space. We allow DSCs and those registered to go in and, and view the content that's there as far as help documents and uh, solution content and things like that. The community page is nice because it, it's not limited to just those users that are registered. Anyone can go and look at this page and you can view all of the links and content that's there without having to log into anything. So whether you own SAP software or you're just interested in learning more about it, you have the capability to do so here in the, in the community page. Uh, what did we attend this community to be created for? So one of our biggest things within the SAP community and why we got on there from an SAP Ariba extensibility perspective is we really want to encourage developer to developer interaction, brainstorming and idea sharing. We think that we have a lot of customers, partners, suppliers um, that could really benefit from learning not only what they've done so far with APIs, custom forms, RPA, and extensibility as a whole, but also what they're trying to solve for. And together we can share these ideas and maybe it's a partner comes up with a solution for every customer that's, um, available on the App Center, or maybe customers have partially solved something and another customer can help them uh, understand what they did to solve that for a similar problem. The next thing is content. So we do have a lot of blogs, podcasts, documentation, and FAQs, which we'll go through in a minute when we see the community page. Following that, I'll show you the question and answer section. And lastly, we have the partner spotlight. So this gives you information about how to become an SAP Ariba partner to extend our SAP Ariba applications through the SAP App Center. And lastly, there is a, an SAP Ariba platform webinar series. Uh, they've gone through a couple webinars so far. Uh, one that some of you may have attended is an SLP training, which was focused on integrations with SLP. Uh, they will be having a, an API session coming up shortly, and they'll be sharing some of their how-tos, FAQs, and best practices based on the service requests they've received and some of the questions that come in most frequently from our customers. So with that, let me give you a quick tour of our community page. So this is the SAP Ariba Extensibility Community page. You can see up here we have a link to our webinar that we're actually in right now uh, and the ability to register for that. We'll, we will continuously keep this updated. So if there's additional webinars or anything that would benefit um, our audience here that they could attend, we will be sure to keep that updated with any available webinars that we may have. 
Down here you can see a link to our extensibility landing page. So this is going to take you to Ariba.com and give you more information on extensibility and configurability as it exists today. You can see, you can contact us here. We also have quick blurbs about what the platform and core infrastructure is and what our capabilities are today, as well as some data sheets and the ability to register to use them. And down at the bottom, you can see we have demos and our podcast episodes here. Some additional resources as well, such as FAQs and uh, FAQs for Intelligent Configuration Manager. And moving back to the site, you can see that we have a link to our extensibility podcast here as well. So this is really where a number of people from our platform team were interviewed um, and kind of discussed with um, our marketing team, some of the platform capabilities that we have today, what extensibility is as a whole, uh, what it might look like in the future, what some of our customers are doing with our extensibility tools. So very similar to uh, what you're hearing today, but we go more in depth into the technology and the use cases and things like that. Next to that, you'll see the ecosystem. So this is really uh, for our partner audience on how to become an ISV vendor partner or an ind independent software vendor partner. Um, but you can also see a link to our SAP App Center. And if I click that, I can filter by categories. If I go into network and spend management, you can see there's a number of options for me to take a look at what applications are available from our partners to extend our solutions. So you can see this is a vendor verifier for SAP Ariba SLP. This helps with procurement automation. Uh, we have invoice scans. So a number of different applications offered by our partners using these extensibility tools that we're discussing today. Next, you can see our featured extension. So today, this one is delivered from our pre-sales team. It is a approval management chatbot, which allows you to fetch documents such as invoices and purchase requisitions via a chatbot. Uh, this really helps end users come up to speed quickly when they're just starting to use the application. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can click on the link. It'll talk to you about what technology was involved, such as SAP Cloud Platform and conversational AI. And one of the key things I want to mention about extensibility is it's really about finding the tools that you have around you, which is why I called it a paintbrush. Um, those are really your, that's your set of paints and, and you can combine these tools and you may have SAP tools, you may have other tools that are outside the SAP landscape that you can combine with these APIs, custom forms, RPA, uh, SAP Cloud Platform, and other technologies. Uh, one of the most often used ones is Blue Prism as an RPA software. When you combine those tools, it really drives a lot of value and, and the potential to automate and um, enrich and validate things within your system. They're just endless. So uh, we really encourage you to start brainstorming now to see what you can come up with or if you have a list of things that your end users are having trouble with or they want to see automated or uh, anything like that kind of brainstorm think a little bit outside the box as to how you could use these tools to deliver on uh, some things that may help them next one here is our featured blogs so you can see uh, right now we have a featured blog series from one of our product managers regarding the flow extension api which is one of the more uh, powerful APIs that we have today. It allows you to take documents that are sent to the Ariba network and actually pause and halt the flow of those documents to allow um, things to happen to those documents, such as adding an attachment or uh, reviewing the taxes or sending them to a different system. And then you can actually restart the process and get them sent to the Ariba network. Uh, so this blog series kind of goes through the different use cases that this particular product manage, manager worked with customers on to ensure they could use this and get the most value out of it. On the right hand side here under resources, you can see getting started. Uh, we have an introduction to our developer portal, which is where all of our REST APIs are housed and where you'll go and create users and applications in order to access these APIs. 
Uh, this is going to be a video tutorial of how to navigate, create users, create applications, things like that. Uh, this is also now where you'll register your RPA bots if you have any. The next one is a sample of uh, calling an SAP Ariba API using Postman. So within this demo, we actually go through calling one of our operational reporting APIs, show customers how to use the different endpoints, such as uh, getting the view templates and the metadata, uh, authenticating, everything like that, to make sure that they can understand in a, in a real way how these are being used and see it um, in person so that they can put it to practice and to use. Underneath of that, we have learning materials. So this will link you to the learning hub where you can sign up for those courses that I had previously mentioned, AR850E and AR851E, if you'd like to learn more about, um, if you'd like to learn more about our courses, you can find them there. I do see a question in the chat here, asking if we can give some use cases for RPA and the S2P process. Uh, we will be touching on use cases for all of the extensibility options a little bit later on in our call here. So I just ask for your patience. Once we, um, once we finish up with the tour here and a couple other slides, we'll get into use cases with the additional time we have left. Underneath our getting started, you can see API resources. So this is going to link you to our SAP API hub. That has more details around all of the SAP Ariba APIs that are available as well as all SAP APIs that are available. Uh, right now, our web service APIs are not on there. We are working at the moment to make sure that we have all of those on there, and we're hoping to do so uh, by early next year, at the very latest. Underneath of that, because we don't have all of our APIs in one place at the moment, we've created an API inventory. This will give you a list of every API that's available from SAP Ariba, whether it's REST or web service or SOAP-based. Uh, it also gives you links to documentation where available and descriptions as well as product lines that apply to those particular APIs. Underneath of that, we have a link to our developer portal. Again, I mentioned this before, this is a place where you can see information about all of our REST APIs and you can get um, additional information about creating applications, which will help you access the data within your site. Below that, we have our reporting field dictionary and fact reference guides. These really will help you understand what fields are within SAP Ariba reporting. So if you're using the analytical reporting APIs, these will help define the fields for you if you've never logged into Ariba, but you may be a developer who's trying to work with these APIs with little knowledge of how the system functions. Uh, these can really help, and they'll also help you understand where to make your different joins within the um, data that you get as an output from our APIs from analytical reporting. Below that, we have an API FAQ and our custom forms resources has a custom forms FAQ as well as a demo of custom forms as they exist today. Uh, we'll be keeping these demos up to date and we will be adding additional demos, especially for how to use each and every one of our uh, APIs. We have a, a team that's creating those for us and. Um, I think they'll be very useful once we get them up and running here. So I would just keep checking back to uh, see what's available as we should have fresh content on a regular basis here. Uh, below that, we have some reference documents for uh, how to work with the developer portal and how to get logged on there, make sure you're uh, registered and everything, as well as how to use our SOAP or web service APIs. Within the expert content section, you see some of our more advanced features for APIs. So um, sample SAP Ariba API extension applications, configuring SAP Cloud Platform connectivity to our APIs, as well as to our SOAP APIs. Some of the advanced features in custom forms, such as using approval flows, adding tags, and using the custom forms API for reporting and then our expert bot content. So this will tell you more information on using bots and, and kind of what we expect and what you should expect as well. And at the bottom here, you can see we have our list of blog posts. Each of these includes our tag, which you can see here is SAP Ariba extensibility. If you'd like to do a blog, we would greatly appreciate it. And we welcome your uh, stories and opinions. 
We just hope that you'll use the SAP Ariba extensibility tag to make sure that it is brought into this section within our page. The same goes for questions. So these, this question section allows our customers, suppliers and partners to ask any questions that they wish to. Um, they can come in here and we have a team within SAP Ariba that will be answering these questions, uh, most of whom are experts with our extensibility tools. So we should be able to get you pointed in the right direction and as much help as you need. With that, I will jump back to our PowerPoint presentation here. Okay, so moving on from our extensibility page, I wanna talk about um, kind of what's available today, what we've seen customers do, what our pre-sales team has done. Um, and essentially this is a pathway to achieving business outcomes. So you can see that APIs, while they are a big piece, are just one piece of the puzzle. We have the ability to embed SAP Cloud Platform portlets within our dashboards within SAP Ariba. We also have the ability to use APIs to connect to external services. You can deploy standalone custom forms, which allow you to leverage those APIs uh, and approval processes to uh, really create a form that drives value to your company. We do allow you to implement UI bots, which allow you to organate, orchestrate business processes, again, where APIs do not exist. And at the end there, you can see you can self-install certified partner applications within our SAP App Center so that you have a more smart and innovative system. A few of the ones you see here um, are created. So obviously, Keelvar, we have our sourcing optimization engine. So uh, Ariba has an optimization tool, but Keelvar really specializes in that. So we've brought them on as a partner to uh, deliver kind of more sourcing optimization capabilities. Uh, and then we have IBM Watson, which helps with contract intelligence. You can see that some folks have created a chat bot. I'll go into the use case of that a little bit more in a moment. An operations desk, which allows uh, persona-based end users to log in and see exactly what they need. That was in tandem with SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, a supplier performance dashboard, which allowed, it, um, allowed them to combine SAP uh, SLP information with information from ERP systems to create a database, uh, which allowed was then visualized within SCP. It gave you information on your preferred suppliers, your qualified suppliers, and the rest of your supply base, where they were located, and it actually worked with Google Maps. So you were able to um, build in Google Maps and you could see where your supply base was. You could drill down into each section and see more information based on that. Um, they've also integrated with Google Home. We've used blockchain tracking from SAP Cloud Platform and also we have price lookups. So that kind of combines one of our catalog APIs to allow you to look at different prices across your uh, supply base. And I do see a question here in the chat, who builds and creates APIs, custom forms, UI bots? Us as an implementation team, our partners or the customers, are there any lessons learned on this topic? So that's a great question. So as far as APIs and custom forms, these are both self-service tools offered by Ariba. Uh, we actually create and build the API from a product standpoint. What you do with the API and how you connect to it is completely up to the customer, or if you'd like to partner up with a partner, you can do so, uh, allow them access through your applications, um, and they can build any kind of application for you or just connect those APIs to whatever uh, system you may need them to, to leverage that data. Uh, one of the biggest use cases is reporting data warehouses. Next one we have is custom forms. So customers or partners can build custom forms as well. Um, typically this is done during the deployment process, but we've also seen it done outside of the deployment process. Um, SAP Ariba may in the future offer out of the box custom form templates, which we would then allow customers to copy and kind of make their own. Uh, but today it's strictly customers kind of creating those from scratch with the drag and drop tools that are available. 
And as far as UI bots, these are entirely customer created and managed. Uh, SAP Ariba does actually not support these UI bots. We have given you the ability to register them just so that you are in compliance with your contracts. But again, um, while we understand that APIs do not exist for everything, we want you to tell us what you're doing with the bots so we can develop an API. That way you don't have as, as brittle of a UI bot going in, you can leverage an API instead of that bot. And that's kind of the lesson learned from that topic is, please do register them, make sure that they are um, on our portal so that we can develop an API and, and help you really get to um, a place where you have a more resilient system in the future. Moving on, we have um, just a kind of a graphic here about what partners we have in terms of SAP Ariba and SAP Fieldglass. So you can see those partner logos here, as well as a link to the SAP App Center. Some of the main ones to call out here are SEAL software, which helps with contract management. Um, we have Keelvar, which I mentioned for sourcing optimization. Solonis is what we call a solution extension partner. So they actually uh, do process mining. They leverage our APIs to uh, help you figure out where your documents are going and how you can fix processes to make sure things run smoother. Uh, DocuSign, I'm sure many of you have used within the UI, uh, kind of a seamless integration to make sure you can get documents signed and returned quickly. And then we have Thomson Reuters and Vertex, which allow you to uh, kind of enrich your taxes. Okay, so getting to the use cases, I see we do have another uh, question that popped in here. So it says, I believe currently there's no API to extract information from a custom D form. We had to use RPA for this to extract information to populate another system. Do you know if this is on the roadmap to extract information from a D form in Ariba S2C? So this is actually possible today. Uh, our analytical reporting APIs allow you to extract deform information. Um, you just have to make sure it's a little bit tougher. The deform name uh, is different based on your site. And um, if you need any assistance finding that, uh, and you wanna put in a question on the SAP community about kind of what to look for, uh, we can definitely help you out there. But you can get inf deform information for sure from our analytical reporting APIs. Okay, so what, have, what are some of our use cases here? So with SAP Ariba APIs, we've seen, first of all, reporting use cases. So a lot of our customers are creating data warehouses and they're pulling data from SAP Ariba to send to those data warehouses. And they're combining that data with uh, other data from other sources, whether it be one of our SAP lines of business or whether it's from a homegrown system or a different cloud system, uh, you can push all the information using APIs into, the, uh, into that reporting data warehouse and you can combine it and kind of manipulate the data to give you any report that you want. Um, and really in the future, what we're hoping, hoping to offer customers is kind of unfettered access to their data. Today we have, we do have limits on our APIs and how often they can be called, and we are hoping to do away with those in the future, but that's a little bit down the road. Some of our next um, use cases include, include automation, validation, and user experience. So we really, we hope that customers will begin to use these APIs to enable automation of kind of redundant or uh, low value add activities and allow their customers and end users to refocus themselves onto more value-driven activities. Some of these examples we've seen so far include tax ID checks or tax validation. Um, we've had customers using the SLP API to set an external approval task. They then use that to get a notification to their third-party system they can pull the information using the SLP API to see what information is in the questions and answers, validate whether or not the tax ID is correct. And once they've done that validation in an external system, they send back an approval message to the external uh, task. If it's incorrect, they can send back a notification that says, okay, supplier, we need you to update this. We see that uh, it doesn't match our records for your tax ID. 
some of the other notable ones here are universal approval systems. So we're seeing these more and more often. Our customers are leveraging the document approval API as well as the uh, strategic sourcing API, uh, external approval API for strategic sourcing and supplier management to pull in different document types into uh, one place where they can add documents from whether it's uh, Salesforce or Workday or uh, really any other system that you may have in your landscape. And you can basically give your end users a view of here's everything that you need to accomplish. So here's your requisitions and invoices from Ariba. Here's the contract task that you need to go through and approve. Uh, and then you can pull in data from other systems as well. So rather than logging into six different places to see everything, you can log into one area and see all of your items that you need to action. Next, we have a chatbot. So we've seen chatbots for a number of different things. Uh, one of the most interesting was guided requisition creation and sourcing event creation. Uh, so really, if you're creating a sourcing event and you don't know much about uh, what you're trying to create, we've seen customers actually uh, kind of create chatbots that can ask you about the product that you're trying to source for, um, the amount that you need, the expected historical price, and just a few questions that it'll ask you. Uh, and then it can actually use historical data uh, that you may have in another system, such as the SAP Cloud Platform, um, that you can kind of run through intelligence that can say, okay, based on your historical data for this event in this region with this commodity code, we suggest you invite this many suppliers that can actually search additional suppliers for you using another API, and then it can actually publish the event for you. Uh, and it'll, it can recommend how long it should run for based on that historical data as well. And once you have it published the event using the event management API, you can, um, you can actually get a link back to that event. So you can just click that link, log in, and see that the event's published and uh, when it will be running. This really does reduce a lot of duplicate work for buyers, suppliers, and internal, internal developers. It also allows you to have your end users up and running a lot quicker with a lot less training. Last one, as I mentioned, is our partner extension. So a lot of partner extensions, not all of them, are built using our APIs. Uh, we have supplier risk insights, APIs, which grabs information from Dun & Bradstreet, and kind of um, enhances your existing supplier risk information. We have tax validation using Vertex or Tops of Reuters, uh, Salona's process mining, which I mentioned before, as well as Kilvar sourcing event optimization. And these are, again, just a few examples as you saw on our partner page. Uh, there's a number of different logos and each of them serve very different purposes, um, such as reading an invoice and uploading it into the system, things like that. We'll take a break here and see if there are any questions. Um, let's see, so SAP Central Inbox is also built on APIs. Yes, yeah, so there's actually um, a Fiori One Inbox feature that we're uh, working together with SAP to uh, come out with. It will be leveraging some of these APIs that I've mentioned here today, such as the Document Approval API and the External Approval API for Sourcing and Supplier Management, uh, but that is a feature that's kind of still in the works. Uh, the next one I see, besides allowing binding APIs, custom APIs on eForms at Procurement Solution, are there any plans to allow external API, custom API calls for standard tools as well? For example, P2O purchase requisitions and form validation for suppliers on submit, enhanced custom SLP form validations, et cetera. So um, that's, a, that's a great question. I think that, um, while we've come out with some APIs that serve a particular function, we are continuously looking for uh, recommendations from our customers and partners, suppliers as well, to see what we can add into our landscape. Um, as far as validation for suppliers on submit or validation in custom form or in SLP forms today, um, I'm not particular or I'm not exactly sure on what's on the roadmap for those particular solutions today, but I know they're evaluating everything that they've heard. 
Okay, so SAP Ariba Custom Forms. We'll go through a couple of use cases here. So one of the things we've seen from uh, probably our, our largest user of custom forms is uh, an automation use case. And they've actually automated a lot more processes than just these two, uh, but these are the two that I wanted to mention today. So uh, they do end-to-end -end user updates for users and user groups without needing to send emails. They have a form where an end user can go in, request additional groups, or request to create a new group. Uh, and they can specify kind of what that group will do based on some drop-down options that are available. What that will do is it will actually trigger an API upon approval, and that API will send the data to their ERP system, which will create a, an Excel file which is then delivered through uh, their ITK into SAP Ariba. And those new users or new groups are created without the need to send emails or to involve anyone else. It's a fully automated process that's completed typically within less than four hours. Second one is very similar, a uh, quick and easy way to manage approval flow updates without involving your IT department. So in this use case, uh, the customers are going in and they are creating a form where they're saying, okay, we need to add a finance approver to requisition approvals because we have a new um, requirement that says any document over $50,000 needs to be approved by the director of finance. So that will essentially do the same thing. It will trigger an API upon approval and it will update the approval processes within Reba with an Excel file that is generated from the customer's ERP system. Again, this is a fully automated process and it takes about four hours to complete the whole thing, sometimes uh, less depending on when the ITK jobs are running. The next ones kind of revolve around data collection. So when COVID started, uh, we saw a lot of time off requests and home office equipment requests uh, being created as, as types of custom forms. Um, these allow APIs to sync to internal HR systems. So you don't feel like putting an approval process in your HR system. You can do that in Ariba with a custom form. And once it's approved, you can have an API send that data to your HR system so that it posts it in the correct place. And then we have home office equipment requests. So as we know, a number of us were um, forced to work from home just to make sure that everyone was safe. And due to that, a lot of us needed new equipment in order to make sure we could work and not miss a beat. So a lot of customers were creating these to make sure that their end users were able to get these new items delivered as quickly as possible. <coughs> Next is the charitable donation form. So uh, we've seen that in our systems quite often as charitable donations are often uh, something that needs to be reported a little bit differently than um, other forms as far as tax goes. So customers create those very often and send them to a place where their tax team can go and review them and make sure that when they're doing their taxes at the end of the year, uh, they've accounted for those. Ad hoc address forms. So some customers don't like to create um, ad hoc addresses without the approval flow. So they've created a form which can then allow an end user to create an ad hoc address, get it approved and send it to the ERP system where it's needed. And then a payment request form. So this can be for expenses, it can be for um, advanced payments, anything like that. Um, but a lot of customers have been creating those to collect the data and make sure they get paid on time. Down at the bottom here, we have partner forms. So, so far, when partners are helping customers get deployed, we've seen creation of industry specific questionnaire templates that partners can actually sell to the field, uh, as well as kind of supplements to the existing supplier registration questionnaires uh, or a vendor onboarding form for different vendor locations uh, has been used as well. But we really see this as a way for customers to um, use vendor management outside of SLP or kind of in tandem with SLP, uh, as oftentimes it's just a location that needs to get added and uh, SLP really handles more of the common supplier information today. All right, let me take a quick look at the questions here. OK. 
Okay, so is the extension for Solonis custom or can other tools be used for process mining like UiPath? So uh, depending on whether or not UiPath would like to be a partner with SAP Ariba, they can go ahead and, and sign up on the Partner App Center. Um, Solonis is one of the customers that has done it, but we do recognize that there are other process mining tools out there and we're happy to partner with any, any partner that offers those uh, specific services. I see a question from Aman that says, can custom forms be sent to external suppliers for their inputs? Uh, this is something that's on our roadmap. We do want to allow customers to send custom forms to suppliers over the Ariba network. Uh, however, we're still working on getting adoption from our Ariba network teams and thinking about what that adoption is going to look like and, and what our suppliers actually need from an uh, end-to-end perspective with custom forms. And I see another one in here. Can we use these APIs with Microsoft Power Agent, Power Virtual Agents platform? So I'm not familiar with that platform. Uh, however, if it does have the capability to um, call and read uh, REST APIs, then I don't see why not. Um, okay. Going back to our presentation here. The last uh, use cases we have listed are our bot use cases. So uh, there's a number more than this, but uh, with the amount of bots that are, are running the system and the capabilities and the different things that you can solve with them, like I said, the possibilities are really kind of endless. So uh, some of the ones I wanted to call out today are automation. So we've seen a number of customers using bots for uh, mass updating purchase requisitions or POs to ensure they have correct accounting information. Uh, this is really what I was talking about before is a low value add task that humans or human users were forced to do before that can really uh, be done by a machine if you have kind of a spreadsheet of what needs to be updated or um, you can kind of code that into say only update requisitions that have this um, current product within their accounting or something along those lines. Uh, we've seen RPA for automatically closing POs that are older than a certain age. Again, that's a very low value added task uh, that we can free up some of our end users time by automating. Uh, creating new engagement requests and supplier risk. So this was a very specific process where engagement requests had to be created based on a notification that they triggered using Ariba APIs. So this was one case where a customer kind of um, combined our APIs with RPA to automate a process. And then another one we've seen is updating payment terms on invoices and POs. Again, these are very repeatable processes, uh, something that's very easy for a bot to go in, search a document, go into the accounting, edit it, and it would essentially be doing the same thing over and over again. We just ask that you run your bots at the same speed that a human user would be running in the UI. And the next section we have validation and enrichment. So we've seen customers use bots for mass updating supplier risk records with information from ex external systems. We do have an API that has recently come out in Q3 that can hopefully allow customers to use an API for this rather than bots. It's a supplier risk custom forms API, uh, something that a lot of customers have been looking for for a long time. As we know, oftentimes there's a lot of different supplier risk systems or uh, risk-esque systems within a customer landscape. Um, we thought that might be a good one to create an API for. The next one is validation of tax and address information within the buying and invoicing module. So really it just goes in and, and checks on certain address information or tax information to say, is this valid? Can we use this? Okay, so Lastly here, before we jump into Q&A, I just wanna kind of give you a call to action to tell us about what you may be trying to solve with our, our extensibility options today. And you can blog about it, you can ask us the question, uh, but we wanna hear from you about what you're trying to solve and how we can help. So you can see that's my second point. You can ask our experts a question. 
Um, if you're interested in learning more about the SAP App Center and how to become an App Center partner, you can see our link there and find out more. That will give you all the details that you need. And lastly, just come explore our site, see if you can find anything that uh, helps you learn more about what you need to know. And we have plenty of content there, plenty of podcasts that you can listen to to help you brainstorm what you can solve and, and how you can deliver the best experience and most value with the Ariva system to your company. At this point, I'll go ahead and open it up to Q&A. Uh, if you would like to unmute, Dave, you want to go ahead with how they can unmute? Yeah, so, yeah, so everyone, everyone can, can unmute, unmute themselves. themselves. When, when you, you hover, hover over, over your, your name, name in the, the participant, participant pane, pane. Um, um, and, then and then you, you can, can click, click raise, raise your hand, hand and we and can we allow can you to allow talk. You to talk. So no, I, 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 so you, so you, you raise your hand, I, I, I am muted. I think I was unmuted as well, so this is Rebecca Sackman. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid I, 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 was, I was only able to join the last few minutes of this. Is there a customer facing deck that's available? Yes, this deck will be sent out at the end of the call to uh, everyone that's attended. Okay, and it can be shared directly with the customer. Correct. This is a public facing deck. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So I have to correct you here. <clears throat> we are not sending those out, but um, they will be provided on the community pa calls page. The, call, the page which uh, Daddy has already posted here in the chat. And uh, maybe, Daddy, you can just. Um, put it here and again. So this is also where you find the recording and it, with, together with the recording, you will find the, the, the deck. The deck. Uh, thanks, Faya. Uh, <laughs> no problem. I did see another question came in. What's the benefit to register the bot in the Ariba developer portal? Um, so that's a great question. Uh, so today, customers are actually not uh, contractually obligated not to use RPA within our system or non-human users within our systems. So if you don't register your bot with Ariba, you're actually out of compliance with your contract and the terms of use that you've agreed to with Ariba. Uh, but from a less legal perspective and a more um, kind of how does it help you perspective, um, we really, we want to understand how customers are using bots within our system, not only to keep you safe and make sure that these bots aren't going to um, be used at such a high rate that they may impact performance on your system, but also so we can take a look at your use case and say, can we build an API for this use case so that rather than having your bot break every hotfix or release or service pack, you can have a more robust, complete integration using an API rather than creating a bot for that. Any other questions? Feel free to raise your hand. We can make sure you get unmuted. Okay. And so thank you everybody for joining us today and this concludes the webinar. Thank you, Sean, for a great presentation. And don't forget to go to the community page to look at the deck and the recording. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.